So hi, yeah, we're, we're here with Gary and Dan. Um, we're looking at the, the process of the sort of install and what happens at the point of install from the engineer's point of view and also then how we check that back at HQ when the, the, the product has been installed. So I'm going to pass over to Dan to explain that a bit better. Yeah, no problem. So as you say there, Owen, there's two aspects to what we're going to go through today. Um, one being what you see currently is the mobile version of our Nexus app. And this is what the engineer will see once they're completing the job for ourselves. So we've sent all the details to the engineer. And as Gary will walk you through then, this aspect is us emulating what the engineer will do for us on site. So the engineer will obviously open the, uh, the Nexus mobile app on his uh, mobile phone. Uh, this is just an emulation of basically what's displayed on the mobile phone screen. Uh, he'll go on to his, his profile under my jobs and click and then basically load what outstanding jobs he has. This is jobs that we've allocated to the engineer. So he clicks on uh, the jobs and we'll see there he's got an outstanding job to get done. So if we just click on that and we want to start the job. So we're greeted this here by the home screen of the job. First thing we need to do is do a vehicle pre-install check. So we just click on this. And this basically guides the engineer through as to what's expected of him to take pictures of as and when he goes. So he wants to take a full vehicle photograph. So you want to add the photograph of the vehicle to this profile here. And if we just click on this and go to. So we take it in, in, in the field, it'll just be click, you know, add photo on that and then on his phone, he will have access well, once, to the camera. Once he click, clicks add photo on, 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 out on real life, it'll actually open the camera up on his phone. Uh, because we're just emulating this here, we have to do it through the PC, you know, so. Uh, so this is the full vehicle photograph showing the registration. You can just click that. OK, so uh, it's important that, and, and front that kind of front angle of it with the red. Front, that's, front that's angle the... With, the, with the registration number of the vehicle clearly visible. Uh, in the event of, uh, you know, there's no registration, it's a brand new vehicle, it's in a dealership, uh, they use the uh, vehicle identity number, the VIN number of the vehicle. Understood. So we have, we're able to tag it with a, a registration of some form, you know. Uh, the next one is the cab condition. I'm sorry, okay. Gary, just, just before you attach the next one, mm -hmm. do, they ever add, do you expect the engineer to add notes or is that just a feature not the, really being used? Or The engineer will add a note if it's the position to say that uh, there's no registration or the VIN number's not on the vehicle or there's okay. something something really odd that he's discovered why yeah. they add a picture or the, the bumper's been removed or, you know, something strange that he sees. Go, well, hang on, I'll add a note here and let the guys know that there was something wrong with this vehicle whenever we got here. Uh, the second one covers that a bit better, cab condition. Basically, whenever he gets inside the truck, that it's not a complete uh, basket case, you know, that all the panels are hanging off it, you know, yeah. somebody else is doing that before him. So this is this photograph here. Basically just a check of condition of the car for any breakages, broken windscreen, dirt all over the carpets, all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, then we've got uh, a dashboard photograph, which is the clocks of the vehicle here. Okay. This is basically to check for the likes of any uh, warning lights that may be on the vehicle. Uh, the likes of EBS failure or ABS malfunction or anything prior to starting the installation that the engineer can go and flag with the customer straight away. Go, oh, look, hang on. I just jumped in here. This is for an EBS fault. I'm just making you aware before I start working on this vehicle, there's a fault with it. Yeah. Uh, it's good practice for him, good practice for us. Keeps everybody right. So that's the just that's the, the first first part of the job. And now you can see the banner's let up green because it's got all the relevant fields. So we're now move on to the second part, which is our Calamp. So we only get a picture of the device serial number. And we add the photographs. And more hours. This gives us the, the, the full serial number of the vehicle there, of the, uh, the tracking number. It's got the uh, IMEI and the ESN number. We also want to see where the Calamp is connected to, power wise. Uh, so we just go through here. Uh, there's the power source there, which is a packed picture of the rear of the fuse board, including the fuse holder, showing where the power has been taken from. Uh, we want to see a location of the column to ensure that it's in a good location within the vehicle. Uh, 
And it's a picture of the Callum cable tie. And again, you'll see the green bars lit up, which lets us know we can advance to the next section. There's also... Daddy, I, and sorry, you just said there the, the location. You said in a good location. I take it sometimes it, it might not be in a good location? or Yeah, on a, on a Callum unit, basically it has internal uh, GPS and GSM antennas. And the idea, whenever you're performing an installation for any engineer, it's good practice to mount it high, as high up in the dashboard as possible. Okay. So it gets, uh, it gets the best chance to get a signal out. Uh, every engineer knows this, and you know this is just it's basically a sanity check for ourselves whenever we see the job coming through. That we go look, that calf isn't reporting in the best. Well, well, it wouldn't because the boy who's fitted it has fitted the way down there, and we'll have to send him, we'll have to send him back out again. Uh, again, there's a, a section there for any additional photographs that he may find uh, relevant. You know, maybe he's going to take power off the plug, and there's really another uh, device connected to the power source. Uh, or anything that he sees amiss with, with the internal wire in the vehicle, he can have an additional photograph there for himself and for ourselves. Uh, so that's set up green, and then the engineer will move on to the next part, which is the squirrel installation. And again, we're going to see the, the serial number of the squirrel to ensure it's the one that we supplied, and a case of any uh, further action may be required in the likes of the DCF to be upgraded or anything. So we just take a picture of that picture. That's now uploaded. Again, a location of the squirrel unit. Squirrel unit location. There we go. And then the squirrel contact location. This is where the canvas information is read, read from. And this is the, the important one with the squirrel. Uh, squirrel denotes us, tell us basically where we have to pick the canvas for up on every given vehicle. So on the, so example, just the likes of, we'll have a whole uh, list of relevant pickup points for each vehicle. Every engineer also has this here. Uh, we need a picture of this to confirm in, in the event of an error, we can basically go back and say, well, look, your picture's showing you've picked that up in the wrong location. You'll have to go back out. Understood. Okay. Uh, there's a secondary uh, data click location, which isn't applicable to this job, which on some vehicles, the likes of uh, Volvos, early Avecos, and some Mercedes vans has a secondary data click uh, location. But for this particular job, it's not required. Okay. And any sort of irregularities you find, again, add a note, make sure you're yeah. clean on that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And the engineer will add a note there if he sees something uh, that is awry on the, when he's doing the job. The Squirrel D8, this is the uh, wire that's connected to the back of the tachograph, which gives us the driver ID number. Uh, there before we can tag what driver is basically driving the vehicle. So we just need to get a picture to make sure that's connected correctly. Uh, there's, there it is there. Add that one. And again, any other relevant photographs as discussed in all previous parts. Yeah. So there's just one there if applicable. So just there, just on certain models or certain vehicles? Certain vehicles, the likes of, uh, again, this information will be on the, the, the uh, documentation from Squirrel, which you will say on the documentation clearly, data click 180 to be okay. fitted. Uh, you know, so that they'll know. And all, all the engineers know which these vehicles are. And again, we always keep this information as well. Uh, so we go to the post, install, and check and testing to the next part. And again, we want to get a picture of the instrument cluster to show that after the installation has taken place, that there is no warning lights up on the dashboard and everything is good. We want to take a picture of the inside of the cab to show that we've left it in a good, clean state after we've done the job. Uh, exterior of the vehicle, again, to show that we haven't done any damage or move the vehicle or bang the vehicle while moving. And then any additional photos here. Then we want to go and run the test on the vehicle to make sure that the vehicle is doing what it should be doing. And for this here, we will need the IMEI of the unit. Okay. We could run the test and the IMEI that we were going to use was Fraser's one from yesterday. Yeah. So two seconds, I just give it a BIMEI. Uh, so that's what you run. Okay. Yeah, so that, that, that will be the IMEI of the, uh, the unit that we're testing from the previous photographs. Uh, yeah. And we'll put our IMEI in here and run the test.
And right, we'll see there that's got no ignition on or ignition off in the last 30 minutes. We run this test now for the last 24 hours and test again. And I see that we have got ignition on, green tick, GPS, green tick, ignition off. The IMEI that we've just tested, squirrel engine on, squirrel engine off, and the squirrel one second message. We also get the odometer and the fuel level of the vehicle, which isn't supported by this particular vehicle that we're testing. Right. And then basically what they do then is they save the test. And again, as previously, lights up green, job's good to go. Any general notes that the engineer feels is uh, relevant to the job. Um, this can be just save and send. You can just see in the outbox here, it's got one outstanding job, and that should disappear, which it has done. And now that comes through to our Zen desk, which will be again tested by ourselves to ensure that everything that the engineer has done is working as it should. And that's yeah. it. Thank you very much, Gary. So, um, I'm just going to stop recording.